Hello everyone, it's Mark with Launchpad B again today, and as promised in a previous video, I'm going to start creating a series of videos to walk you through using ClipChamp.com. And today's video will be an introduction to ClipChamp, just a high level, kind of get you familiar with the basics, kind of show you around, uh, and give you enough so that you can get started. Now I do want to remind everyone that this is not a paid endorsement. Those of you that know me well and that have uh, met with me in the community at some of the events know that I'm constantly looking to give back and constantly looking to help other entrepreneurs just because it's all about helping each other out. So I hope that this video is beneficial to you. So jumping right in, this is clipchamp.com. This is the interface that we're working with. So once you get logged in, you'll have a view like this. Now along the top, there are gonna be templates. And if you click on the left-hand side over here, there's also a template library. Now, template libraries are not free necessarily, uh, but they do a lot of the work for you so that if you want to talk about curbside pickup, let's say, let's go ahead and select that and we're going to use the template. Now, this is going to be a one by one ratio, which is going to be beneficial to which is going to be beneficial to sites like Instagram or something like that. We'll go ahead and select it. And what it does then is it's going to go ahead and give you a pre laid out scene. Now, you can replace the video clips in here with your own video clips. Uh, there's also going to be font that's already here and applied. And it, it looked like we also had some effects in here where the color change is already applied to that. Today's video, we're not going to focus on using a template. Instead, we're going to create a video from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the home screen here and it will save your projects here where it says your video. So any project that you work on, uh, it will save it for you and it'll be available there. That way you can pick up where you left off if you need to do so. So we're going to go ahead and create a brand new video. Now there are gonna be different formats that are available. Now, in order for a format to work, your raw files have to be in that format. So if you take a cell phone and you record with it in portrait mode, you will not be able to create a widescreen or a cinematic shot. You wanna turn the phone sideways, then you'll be able to shoot widescreen or cinematic. Now, landscape, portrait or landscape, you'll be able to create square. Portrait and social, which are the two on the left there, you'll need to shoot with your phone in the upright position. Now, the good thing is, is beneath each of the descriptions, they'll tell you what it's typically used for. So for us, we're gonna go ahead and select widescreen. Once you get in, this is where the actual editing is going to be happening. Now, ClipChamp does kind of mimic video editing software. I work with video editing very often, so this is very intuitive to me and makes sense. Um, to the average person though, when you first see this interface, it may not necessarily make sense to you. Now, if you're a new user, ClipChamp will provide you with some on-screen prompts kind of telling you what things are, but hopefully this video will kind of get you through that even better. So the first thing we're going to want to do is import our files. So I've already went ahead and created a folder that has some of my files already on it. I'll go ahead and pull it on here so you can see it. I'm actually working with two monitors. Uh, this is a video that I created for a company um, that creates a laptop security lock that's called the Anchor. It's actually a really cool lock. Uh, and these are some of the files that I had for them. Now, we're not going to create the entire video today. Just going to use a couple of select videos out of here to kind of set up a sequence to kind of show you how it works. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off and put it on my other screen. So what you're going to do here, you can either drag the files directly into the square that's over here, or you can simply click on where it says browse files. Then we're going to navigate to the folder. And this is the folder that I've created. And what I want to do is I want to focus on product shots. So let's go ahead and get this clip here. And what it's going to do now is that it's actually importing the video. Now, the cool thing is, is that it's not actually loading the video to ClipChamp's website. The site is actually identifying it on your hard drive. I don't know how it works. It's kind of weird and foreign to me, uh, but it saves me having to load a massive file to the internet. Now we're going to go ahead and add some more content. Uh, so what we're going to do now is going to click on add media on the left. And again, we'll click on browse files. I'm going to go ahead and add this file. And then you can add multiple files at a time if you wanted to. So like, let's say, for example, I wanted this file here and I'm going to hold on the control button and I want this file as well. We're going to go ahead and open those two. It'll actually drop both files in at the same time if you want to do it all at once. Now, for some reason, when I do it this way, it actually takes a lot longer than had I had just done it as an individual file one at a time. I don't know why. That's just the way it works. So as those import, let's go ahead and continue on. So now we have our project files sitting here on the work surface. And what I want to do is I'm going to start off with a product shot. So you go ahead and you take your file and you just drag it onto your timeline. And what it'll do now is it'll drop it onto the timeline. This clip is 54 seconds in length. 
You'll notice on the right hand side we do have a zoom in button that kind of gets the spreads the timeline out that you get very close to the file and then you have a zoom out that way you can see it from a distance. Zooming out is more beneficial if you want to look at everything at once. Uh, there's also fit the screen. On the left hand side we do have some additional options that we're going to use and we'll get into that here in a few seconds. So what this video is is this is actually a video uh, of the product being unboxed. Now there was some trickery that I used to kind of make this thing open on its own. Uh, it took me several times to find the the best shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward here just by moving this cursor. And I want to get to the last time that I did it. So here we go. I'm gonna stop there. Now you can hit the play and that, or you can hit spacebar to play and spacebar to stop. And I wanna find the magic spot right before this thing slides out. That's the tray that contains the product. You see how it's sliding out there? So that's my sweet spot. I'm gonna stop it there. On the left-hand side over here, we do have a button that says split or a pair of scissors. We're gonna go ahead and clip that. Highlight this longer track and then you can either hit delete here or you can hit delete on your keyboard. And all of that just to get this one clip of this sliding out. Once it slides out, I want it to stop there. We're gonna stop it and I'm gonna split again and I'm gonna cut away the piece I don't need. So we have a quick unboxing product is sliding out. We like that, that's nice and good. Also, there is audio that I want to eliminate, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit this little icon here and it's gonna mute my track. Let's go ahead and move now to the second shot. And uh, this is gonna be a rotational shot or we do have a panning shot. And I believe I wanna go with the panning shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that on here. And uh, what this is now is this is a simple dolly shot. It's a left to right panning shot of the product moving by. And I wanna capture it here where it's just kind of moving on the screen. So we'll stop here. We're gonna split, highlight this piece and delete. And then we're gonna continue on. So it opens, we slide by the product here. We're gonna stop there and we're gonna split. So, so far we've created about five seconds of video, uh, but that's okay. And I'm using something that's probably a little bit more advanced, which is okay. I wanna do this cool little product spinning shot here. All right, there we go. We want to let it kind of turn to right there. Uh, we don't want to put too much on there. I don't want to. I'm just kind of making it fun. Now, I do have a shot that I forgot to import. It's a shot of me actually picking up the item off the tray. So let's go ahead and I'm going to add media, browse my files, and uh, find that particular clip where I'm picking it. Here it is off the tray. And let's go ahead and get that file in here. Again, drag it onto the timeline. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through. I kind of fight with it a little bit and then I'm able to lift it off and I dropped it. Look at that. Okay, resetting and we are about to lift it. There it is. That's what I want. That one piece. Stop there. We're going to split the clip. And here we go. Picking it up. Stop in there, splitting. And then I'm going to end the shoot with me holding the product in my hand. Now in future videos, we'll continue working with these exact same files that way you become familiar with them. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and browse files. And again, I want to be holding the product in my hand as the final shot. Once it comes in, we're gonna go ahead and drop it here. And uh, this is the clip of me holding it. Now, I'm kind of moving it around. I wanna find it where I'm reflecting the light off of it to kind of make it look a little bit cooler, um, which may be right there. I kind of like the way that looks. A little bit of movement, a little bit of movement. We'll stop here, split it, and there. Now for this one here, um, I, ideally I would like to slow down the footage to kind of put it in slow motion. We'll do that in a later video. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, making sure that everything is muted. And let's go ahead and play the sequence all together. Let's see how it looks. Product's opening up, product is panning by, nice and smooth. That might be too long. A little bit of a product rotational shot. Ah, we're gonna make that shorter. You can actually, to shorten a clip, other than splitting it with the scissors, you can actually take this and drag it a little bit shorter if you want to. Same thing with this one here. I think it was a little too long. Let's watch that again, see if we like the way it looks. Product slides out, product is sliding by, product rotation shot, okay, looking good. Then we're picking up the item out of the box. I think that shot is too long. Let's pause, go back. Let's make that a little bit shorter. Picking up the product, and then now we're holding the product in my hand. Great. We're gonna go ahead and stop it at that point. Um, that, in my opinion, that's enough information to convey what we're trying to do. 
Uh, so rough and tough, that's how you drag the files onto your timeline. That's how you trim the files and interact with them and then line them up side by side. This is very basic. Uh, in future videos, we'll get into slowing the time down. We can get into coloring, brightening or darkening or adding color to them if we wanted to. Uh, we can get into overlays, graphics and fonts. We can even get into adding some background music. But for the sake of this video and just the basics, we just wanted to cover how to get clips on there. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to go ahead and export the file on the top left hand side where it says Untitled Project. We're going to go ahead and call it Anchor 1. Pretty basic, right? On the upper right hand corner now, we're going to go ahead and click the button that says Export. Now, if you're using this as a free user, you can export at 480 resolution for absolutely free. Uh, you can do 720 or 1080, but that costs money. I happen to be a platinum user, so I can do 1080 all day long. Doesn't cost me any more than the $40 a month that I'm already paying. For the sake of showing 480 resolution, we are gonna export it at 480 and click continue. This way I can show you what a 480 resolution file looks like, and you can decide whether you like it or if you wanna spend a little bit of extra money. I will tell you that exporting at 480 is pretty good. So what's happening now is the file, it's actually, the website is actually creating our video right now. It's doing all of the editing. On the bottom right hand corner here is a little screen. So like, let's say I wanted to go to my Outlook or navigate to something else. Uh, it's letting me know that it's still running in the background. Now it would be ideal to keep your browser open. You can't close your browser doing this or it will not work. Once the export is completed, it's gonna go ahead and download it to your computer. And that's it, it's done. Now let's take a look at it and see how it looks. Does 480 resolution work for you? And again, if you're okay with that, you'll get to do it for free.